here we have character broadsheets. We make references to characters past and present, and usually bring characters from previous campaigns into the modern day campaign. What would the the goal of this series is to go over previous characters and kind of post mortar them, see where they came from, see where they're going, reminisce about memories of them. Today we're going to be talking about probably one of the funniest characters in my campaign that I love, just because the meme content that could be made from this character. G. So the, the so the main setting of the campaign was set in the year 3200. Augmentations had been everything. You, I, I more or less was like, you want to make a character? And you were like, yes, I'm down for Robo Badass. So can you tell me a bit about Gene's story in the campaign itself, before the campaign started and during the campaign? You mean like um, what I had in store for the character, who he was, how he acted, and all that, right? I mean, let's start off with the basics, like yeah. character, uh, like the character name. Where'd you get the inspiration from? What was kind of like, where'd you pull these names out? Because I heard the other two, and I want to know more about them. Um, shit, I, I honestly forgot what Gene's last name was. I remember his nickname, which is the Shinigami. Uh, it was Gene... I don't know if we ever came up with a proper last name. I think it was a simple last name. I think it was like Gene Bradley or something, right? Oh, yeah, Gene Bradley. Yeah. At the time, uh, me, me, uh, I was rewatching Formula Brotherhood for like the six hundred time, and Fair. now I'm like, you know, King Bradley. That's a cool name, Bradley. So, and then because uh, you know. Uh, the setting, cyberpunkish future. I'm like, okay, first name, first name. And then it, it, it hit me. I'm like, you know what was else in space? Fucking Outlaw Star. The so, best character. <laughs> so, grab Gene from the main character. And then that day, I'm like, that's something that hey, if, you know, the last story I had from him was like, he was a merc, got fucked over, came back. But he was he was the John Wick of the group. You know, he he... He was really good. And so John Wick being called the Boogeyman, I'm like, what would he be? Shinigami, the fucking Grim Reaper. Or the God of Death, I think is what it is. So unlike D&D or Pathfinder, there's only really three classes in uh, Stars Without Number. There's Psionic, which you had Fafnir for. There's Expert, which I believe, um, I believe Julian was the only one, maybe um, Amanda for now as well. You played as a warrior, which you and um, a lot of the NPCs were warriors as well, or multi-class kind of. You were a pure warrior throughout. Yeah. Tell me a bit about why you chose that. Uh, that Why that called out to you. Hmm. Because so what, what I, the uh, inspiration I had for Gene was obviously Gene Starwin from Outlaw Star. Uh, but then I was, I, I, I was like, okay, everything I saw that's in that same kind of bubble, uh, I will be Bob, you know, uh, Spike Spiegel. I wanted to create this kind of like a loof ish character who had a, it will and also eighties movies, right? That really by the book oh he was a badass he was a merc he murdered people he he did his job the way he needed to be done and then he got fucked over so he's back with the vengeance that type yeah. of thing so i'm gonna oh go ahead oh no go ahead go ahead i'm gonna pose a sub question to this because now that we're delving into my campaign here if you were to put him into a D, &D class what class would you have put him in Oh shit, that's honestly a really good question. I think with Gene, because Gene was uh, your you know typical like gunslinger who who had a you know who was good with the sword, uh, basically like a mix of mostly solid snake and with a little bit of of uh, riding at the end with a little fucking katana. Um, ah, oh, you know I. For now, until I come up with a more, because I never thought of that. I guess rogue 
right? Because he, he was never supposed to be a powerhouse. He was never supposed to blow up buildings. He's not. Yeah, touch. he's not a fighter or a paladin. Yeah. And I mean, your hit point rolls really yeah. weren't that great either. So <laughs> it was basically more of like you know, going for good kills. Like you know, just yeah, yeah, yeah definitely a good. That's a really good question. But yeah, I guess rogue for now. Just like I yeah, see, I was at least to be agile. That's yeah. definitely one of his strongest suits. And you know, blowing himself up. But that's we'll get to that. <laughs> so let's delve a bit more into the character and not the classification of it. Mm -hmm. So, tell me a bit more about the person, the personality of Gene, where where he was in the party, and what kind of role you wanted him to fill by the end of the campaign. Yeah. Maybe maybe a quirk of theirs as well. I mean, honestly, what can I tell you about Gene? Gene, because uh, again, he was a, a merc. They didn't really care too much besides uh, him getting the job done. Left his family. Uh, it felt like he had no real place until he had that uh, that group. So after he was almost, you know, basically murdered, came back and only had one focus, and that was murdering the guy who murdered him and his crew. Uh, works. I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, Gene loved his sister. He loved his step sister. He he would do anything. For so, and to her. So, I know that that family bond was supposed to be strong when we rolled for your for your bond. Mm -hmm. Um, the do anything for and to her was that born from the memes made by the group, or really were you was. like, no, oh, I'm not gonna, no. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm not gonna like tell you like, you know what, that was my intention the entire time. No. I was just wanting to be friendly with her. Like, you know, we really have this bond. And like, you know, <laughs> hey, sis, do you mind uh, getting my uh, my dry clean? Can I, can you mind just picking, you know, grabbing my laundry? Oh, yeah, no, like, that'll you got do. Oh, no, yeah. no, you got <laughs> stuck. Let me help you out. Because we hadn't met with Gene's family until in the campaign, you guys had gotten to the Kurokawa system, at which point, you went off the main planet over to Satsuma, where your family has a plantation. and Not a plantation, but a, a, a farm, more or less. And, yeah, you went there. Um, but we, we didn't meet your sister until that point in time. Yep. And, um, yeah, like, it, at first, it didn't seem like that. And then after that session ended, all of the memes about step stepsister, because you're technically not related We're to not. her. There's no technically so, we're not related. So we was, grew up together. I grew up with a bunch of friends. Doesn't mean I want to bang them. I think that's where the memes came from. And then it just, it just like a snowball rolling down a hill turned into an avalanche. That's just yep. what happened. Yep. And then by the end of the campaign, it just stuck. <laughs> so in the, so in the one shot, um, mm -hmm. we got to see kind of a finalization to another version of Gene's story. Yeah. And I have plans for that from there, but um where did where did uh Gene's story like where did that start to form in your head? And were there reason like were there mechanical reasons in the in the game rules? Or was it just RP reasons that you developed your character further into the warrior line instead of going for psionics or anything? No, I mean, with with uh, with Gene, it was the same thing where, like, I didn't want him to become psionics. So, like, he was supposed to be old-fashioned, you know? Uh, he did because he, he basically was the only one, unless I'm wrong, but he was the only one in the group where he didn't really have tech. He still had the, uh, the old Razor, you know? He still yeah. had, uh, they're like, wait, what, what is that? Oh, this is my phone. No, I, I that's, mean, not, I that's think, not a phone. <laughs> yeah, I think you were the only person on the crew that didn't have augmentations either. Nope. I had the old and... sidekick, man. I got that help, the old Razor. <laughs> I was, love, that was old tech. <laughs> so, in, the, like, in a world of augmented people and psionics, you were the odd man out that was just 
Joe Blow, have, the guy right. down well, the street. Well, everyone had their uh, their fucking I body six thousand, and he still yeah. used the Zune. Okay. <laughs> He's like, oh, well, I can just play my music by thinking about it. Really? Yeah, I got to get my <laughs> ear pods out. Don't just, mind me. Just start the storm or just starts dancing throughout. Like, yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> so <laughs> the main campaign ended abruptly. Um, let's just put it out there. A lot of people didn't want to play. A lot of people didn't feel comfortable in the cyberpunk atmosphere as far as exit um exit stuff has gone um it seemed like a lot of people didn't feel comfortable in the cyberpunk atmosphere or the sci-fi atmosphere as well <laughs> so the campaign ended very unnaturally and not the way i wanted it to i want to I, like this is going a bit off of the normal questioning did you feel satisfied in gene's original death if you I... don't remember oh no i remember um that was honestly the only thing where i'm like because I, he was always originally intended to die okay right? but, I mean, so like spike spiegel he didn't exactly have a happy ending at the end of the at the end of the the, the story like he was unfortunately always supposed to die because he had already died once he so came you, back as a ghost yeah so you're the entire time your end goal was to have at some point if not at the end of the natural campaign mm -hmm. your character was going to die at some point and you were mm -hmm. fine with that you didn't have any plans for after story segment of no he goes back to the farm and he becomes a farmer yep. or he goes to war he was just he's gonna die yep fair so we're going to eventually do another cyberpunk campaign with D, &D rule but i want to ask is there a chance in your mind since your character has been left open more or less to being introduced to any of the universe is there a chance we're going to see in the future you bringing back gene it is definitely a possibility, especially with how the one shot ended. Because uh, I mean, what if he, you know, he comes back, but he doesn't look like Gene? He's not really Gene, but it's still him, right? With that with that weird like. Uh, mm, do you guys know uh, Dead Man from DC Comics? Yes. Yeah, you know, uh, basically he's the, he's this specter. He's this phantom who can possess bodies something along that line where some he you know there's a body that fits all the, the requirements and he takes possession of that body or robot or thing that he can use to basically come back so more or less if the if the timelines if everything's if the stew is perfect you're going to be able to just bring back gene and be like no he fits in this story I'm going to play Gene 2.0, but he's going to go by a different name. As More. long as it fits. Uh, maybe not a different name, but as long as it fits and it, if it makes sense. If it's not, uh, you know, like, oh, and then out of nowhere, how here he comes. Like, it's got to make at least enough sense because even in fucking dumb action 80s movies, things still made just enough sense for like, that's stupid as fuck, but I mean, it fits. It does yeah, fit. Yeah, I mean, completely fair. So, let's say the campaign is still going. We've gotten done with multiple sessions. How would, what would be your ideal ending for G? Like, how would you have wanted him to die? Or the way that you died in the finale of Far Reaches, was that exactly what you imagined and more? Honestly, like what, what I really did want it, I wanted that that one-on-one -on -one fight with the with his target right i wanted yeah. that spike spiegel fight with with the other guy i wanted that uh solid snake and liquid snake fight i wanted that it was just them the story uh is going on everyone's fighting the big bad by themselves uh gene unfortunately was like well i could help you or i could kill this motherfucker for killing my team so he kind of like said it made his peace said his goodbyes um uh, and 
ideally you know in my, in my own head it, i would have liked it to be like no guns just sword against sword right traditional yeah. you kill me or i kill you or we both kill each other the holster gets unbuckled yeah. thrown to the ground out comes the sword time you know, for the you, you know, know again that old like done and done the whole thing where they pull out the guns and it looks cool they're like you know we could do this or and then you know they throw away their really cool weapons and they just use fucking simple blades <laughs> okay so we've gotten most of that done i want to also ask a new question because this is the first character that we're doing of this campaign I want to know what was Gene's, or at least if not your opinion, what was Gene's opinion of the crew that he was working with? Did you meld with anyone? If the campaign had gone on further, is there like any relationships that you would have liked to develop a bit more? Tell me, tell me something about the crew that you liked or didn't like. So with Kate, it was kind of like a, that that kid mischief, you know, like they both were good gunsmen. Um, they both had that bond uh yeah. he definitely out of everyone he definitely would have de uh developed a, good, a decent relationship with julian because he just saw julian as like he's the captain right he's the yeah. leader of this crew i at the very least have to do my part and help him so i can kill this fucker fair now uh and as funny as the whole relationship was between uh Gene and god damn what the fuck was he called but god damn Sean fucking Fafnir Connery uh <laughs> so oh god the reason why I had Gene always you know butt heads with him because because Gene at the very least knew that this guy was a, a good doctor but he, he just kept seeing like this guy's a fucking shit show he's a drunk he keeps taking drugs he's gonna get us all killed this guy's not fucking doing anything right but you saw him as Every like this guy's gonna is going to jeopardize my one shot of revenge yeah and i'll I kill think, him before think, he gets me killed yeah i think everyone's opinion on the ship was like the drug sh needs to stop because not only is this putting that risk for enemies but what is I, this slavery i do i is? do remember uh gene uh about to form a weird hate bond with the uh, was it the nurse uh, the one who, uh, who oh. was working with Fafnir uh, and they were yeah, both just like yeah and they were just both like this guy's a fucking shit show like yeah <laughs> why can't he just OD if he just ODs yeah. he's out of her hair you know I I really wanted him to be like yeah I want to take this amalgamation of drugs and every time I was rolling d20s for that character more or less to see cool like does it just not gel with your system or are you starting to go crazy did you overdose is there any medical prob probabilities for some reason my rules for all your enemies complete crap when it came to saving his life rules were always good and i'm like come yeah, on man. i just want what, this character what you should have like, done you know, if, what you should have done. done what you should have done if he fucks up the roy goal you just go to old jack black from tropic thunder you just od now bitch you od it's <laughs> <laughs> just on the floor it was like do any of you save him well i mean out of gd doesn't know anything about medical so you know, nothing he can do fair <laughs> i can make this worse <laughs> so with so you've you've talked about most of the characters with amanda for now um, she got she left probably about halfway through the campaign. Did you want to develop anything with that character, the like the hacker character of your group, or was that kind of like, eh, she's there? Dude, I barely remember her. <laughs> I barely Fair. remember the Amanda's character just because of how outlandish most of our other characters were. And unfortunately, by the you know up, when it came to the point where she just couldn't play with us anymore, it was just like, so where'd she go? Oh, she just in her room. It's like, yeah, oh, okay. Okay. I mean, I think I think the main thing that everyone on the ship had in common was I hate Fafnir. And that was probably the one commonality that could unite the ship together to be like, we need to kill this guy. Like, let's, let's just, you know what? He's not ODing. Let's just OD him on bullets. What was the nurse's name again? They said Natasha, was it? Natasha, yeah. That was my one regret. Because I'm like, I'm... I'm gonna have Gene bang this lady because he decided their pure mutual hatred going like, yeah, he's an asshole. You wanna fuck? 
That was my one regret. Okay. I wish I would have uh, came full circle on that one. Yeah. Okay. So I'm 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 going to drag this out a bit more because I want to keep talking about Gene. I want like this is the one campaign where I feel like all the characters just never got fully developed or at least not to the goals that they wanted. And although you wanted Gene to die, if the campaign had gone on further, do you think at any point Gene would have tried to go into psionics? I mean, that sounds like Honestly, a no. Honestly, so but if uh, another good route would have been also he... Either he succeeds, he kills the guy, but is mortally wounded, right? Uh, or on oh, this case, that's actually almost mortally wounded. He gets his fucking right or left side, his right side just fucking blown off, right? He loses his arm, loses it a leg or two, and yet he has to, he's like, the captain needs me for to keep going. I'll do it. Uh, I'll take the implant and he comes back you know, with some upgrades. Or, uh, same thing, uh, probably with the grenade, you know, uh, he beats Gene, Gene uses the grenade, blows themselves up, um and they both survive uh gene with with the implants and the other guy the with, robocop survival with there's not more implants like like he fucked them up really bad to the point where next time he sees him it's basically adam smasher where he's yeah, like exactly. holy shit i can't even fucking see your skin anymore yeah that was that was the one thing because i wanted i gave you guys more or less i gave you all the chromebooks and i was like do some shopping tell me what you want in your character yeah like, give me some stuff that, like, will spice up the campaign. And no one ever chose the full body, like, Borg replacement, which kind of disappointed me, but I was still going to have it be that eventually you guys would meet. And your rival originally was going to be full Borg, just more or less, like, human skin on top. Yeah. Kind of like yeah. an Terminator. Okay. But then after after we had developed your, uh, the nemesis a bit more, then I was like, no, let's just make him, like, human with, like, his arms replaced so he has knives on them. And I think that opinion, in, in my opinion, that was pretty cool, but not my best work. So, what is a plot that you would like to just, to like, what is something that you, with Gene, would like to go back and revisit for, like, a one-shot or a miniature campaign? Like, whether it be how he and Alexei and the rest of his group of, I don't think we ever came up with a name for your original mercenary band, but like, would it be something in that timeline or would it be in the future or would it be somewhere in the middle of the campaign? What is a one shot or a miniature campaign that you would like to like, um, more or less play out with G? Oh, no, I mean, definitely something in that Merc uh, timeline. We you know basically just the fucking shit got me. Like, this guy was just a f death to people, right? Like, people would, someone, you know, someone would just take a fucking step and next thing they know, their head's on the goddamn ground. Yeah. There are like, one of the, like, one of the stories I always liked from uh, John Wick was um, Lawrence Fishburne's story of, like, I'm just there minding my own fucking business and you have your fucking knife right there like i didn't even hear you breathing yeah like that's what i wanted if this guy was basically just a ghost and just slit people's throats fair okay okay <sighs> trying to think of anything else um so yeah i'm doing like i said we're planning on doing a cyberpunk campaign sometime in the future it might not be on saturdays who knows what day of the week it's going to be at this point but in that care in that campaign it's going to be set 50 years in the future do you see a way of bringing john back for that campaign or are you like thinking about an entire new character or do you not even want to take part in the cyberpunk anymore you meant gene right that yep yeah. sorry listen all your grenade wielders oh, i'm somehow always like whoa where am i <laughs> listen oh, i make I, I, I just throws grenades everywhere oh. Listen, Jesus. at this point, if your next character doesn't have a grenade machine gun, I'm just going to be disappointed. You should be a Fallout New Vegas character at this point, you know? <laughs> but, yeah, like, uh, quite legitimately, like, do you... Is there any plans for you in future campaigns of, like, the next time we play a Kyle? 
or the next time we play an Anthony's War, or the next time that we do another one of my campaigns. Do you have any plans of bringing back John, or are you just like, if it feels right, then I'll play it? You said, you said John again? But yes. Damn it. Uh, again. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I mean, as much as I really would love to, like, like I said, it does, it needs to make sense. Yeah. Because in both, <laughs> both genes, well, the first one just fucking blew the fuck up. You know, just kamikaze the hell out of himself. Yeah. Um, and the second gene... Well, shit, yeah, apparently his his entire existence was just erased. So it's something I would I would love to workshop, you know, I would yeah. love to workshop it and see if, OK, this makes sense. Let's do this. Let's bring Gene back in. OK. So we've gone out of order with the question. I've already asked if you want to bring back Gene for a campaign multiple times. Is there anything that you wanted to do in the sessions that you were able in the campaign that you were able to never? Oh my goodness, I can't even fucking talk anymore. That you yeah, were never able to do. Yeah, you know, I'm turning Canadian. Oh, a boot. But is there anything that you, while playing Gene, wanted to do but just weren't able to or never had the time? There's a few things that I mean, I mean, who's to say that she didn't, you know, got friendly with the sister, you know, I'm just saying. A gentleman never kisses and tells, I'm just saying, if it happens, it happens, and that's it. Oh man! <laughs> so I just, I just say, why do you, you just ever wonder imagine, why G was geez. so comfortable going? Like, you know what? I'm gonna blow myself up. I I saw paradise. <laughs> I felt it. <laughs> I, I, I touched her panties. Everything in life is good. <laughs> but you don't. Well, you also didn't know when he grabbed the grenades. In this little pocket, he's going like, ah, just where I put those. <laughs> the grenades panties. pouch. You open it up, and there's just a bit, like a bunch of pictures of your sister in panties at the end. You're like, life is good. Like now, I, like, <laughs> this is what I'm fighting for. <laughs> <laughs> but if there's one thing, I guess I, hmm, I would have. It really is that whole backstory of him as a Murph. Um, that or no, no, yeah, I'm gonna go with that one. Like, I, 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 I would love to like paint, a, not necessarily do a role play of it. But, you know, like I should play, but more like a cutscene of him as a Murph, even just a glimpse of how what fucked up shit he did. Because that was his job. He didn't. Yeah. He didn't ask. He was like, "Oh, so I want you to kill this guy." Okay. Well, does he have kids? No. He was like, "Okay, cool." Yeah, that was that was the one thing I didn't like about my campaign is we didn't really get to because it got cut so short. We didn't really get to delve into any of the backstories too far. We got we touched a little bit on Amanda for now's backstory, but I wanted to explore that a bit more as well. We touched on Julian's the most, but like yeah a lot of it just didn't get bring, brought up because that was kind of going to be the halfway point of like cool you see the rivals and then memories of your past come back and then yeah backstory time more or less the usual anime trope of okay cool we're halfway through the season we need to actually go delve into our backstory and this is where I came from kind of shit so one last question and your regrets with John? Or are you satisfied with how everything went? He did it again. Yes, I do have, uh, and I do have any regrets with Gene or John. Which one is it now? Uh, you know what? They're just both the same. They're, they're, they're both squashbucklers. Let's, let's be honest. Yeah, I'm just saying John never really blew himself up. Uh, but 
if I were to give a regret for Jean, uh, it w definitely would have been more. I think I. W and there's one thing I would actually do regret is not reacting differently into the fact that not only we fought zombies, but he died. Yeah. I wish I took more time on to really, because uh, Anthony did Julian very well to the point where he was he was just fucking freaking out, because obviously yeah. that's just not normal. That was definitely not normal. I mean, you're uh, on a derelict ship with psionic zombies, and you got blasted with a four gauge shotgun straight to the back. I mean, yeah, it's amazing that you even got back up. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like I said, there's a lot of things I wish I could like. I I honestly, if I could redo that campaign, I would love. It. But yeah, there's there's a lot of things in that campaign. I think not only the players, but a lot with myself as well. Wish I could have redone or had been like, this happened to you. Like, are you okay mentally or are you in a fucked up headspace? Like, you might need some of Fafnir's supply stash now. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Uh, another regret I do have would have been I never did put too much work into getting uh, my old gun back, Gene's gun. Because I remember yeah. I was telling you about the gun. I'm like, you know what? I really would love to have. Like, what's a what's always thought was a cool idea from the movie Dread? His gun. Yeah, and I tried the, to include that in the one shot. I yeah. don't think that's on the channel, but that was the one thing in the one shot. But, I was like, I'm going to make this a reality because this game yeah. has seen the full campaign to its. But extent. man, I like to still think to this day. Uh, one of the coolest guns in anything would have been like Dread's gun, where he he would just go out oh, shot and just fires a goddamn incendiary grenade. Like that's just a cool idea of a gun that just changes uh, which round, what type of round you're using, just by saying code words. Yeah, exactly. So, did you have any secret from other players with G? Not John G. Not that I remember, honestly. Did I have a secret? Our, uh, our, our third wheel is giving us the nod of yes. If you want to chime in. But... Disembodied voice of God here. Um, yeah, uh, Gene, we never knew. You guys had, had cooked up a whole bunch of, of something that you guys would, would hint to, like an inside joke that the rest of us as players, we were always like, what the fuck does that even mean? I don't know what it was, but you guys had something that you guys had talked about outside of session, pre-session, whether it was character concept or whether it was the gun itself, because we had never discussed any of that stuff, like in game. I mean, yeah, like the gun never got the never the gun never got brought up really. Like, I more or less had given you cool. Here's some here's some ammunition places you can buy like derelict rounds for it, but you're not going to find a lot. But you never show that off to anyone. Of like, look at this sweet ass gun, bro. <laughs> so that was definitely a secret. But you were, you were kind of open with your. You were more open with your character than a lot of the other players were. But I don't remember any secrets off the top of my head, and I don't have my hard drive with my files on it. Maybe it was just the character concept of where you guys came up with him. Because, yeah, you guys definitely were like, we'll get to that part. I don't remember. I, I think it was just talking about the whole, like, the, uh, rival and the gun. I think it was just that. I, But I don't remember. It wasn't like, fuck, dude, it wasn't like Zenku. Bro. I was telling you, like, what I wanted him, for him to do was basically the whole uh, evil thing, the whole King Piccolo where he just shoots out... <laughs> Yeah, see where that leads. But yeah, nothing like that. That was that was the one thing about the most recent the Empress of Hope campaign that I liked was no player secret. Like anything you tell me is on the table for other players to do. Like I wanted to be one hundred percent transparent. And while I do like the idea of player secrets, I don't want it to be anything big. Like yeah. oh, I used to work for this megacorp and they hate my guts. Like, I want that to be 
plain and simple. And I kind of tried to implement that, but I was also open to players going, no, this is this is my character. I mean, Amanda's for now's character is like 100% all secret. It was very well hidden from everyone. Like, Amanda for, like, Fafnir caught on, but that was because he was also meta metagaming quite a bit with that too, because he never investigated. He was just like, you seem different. Hmm. Would you like to write on my red box? But with the thought of Fafnir souring our heads now, I think we're going to call it. Thank you everyone for tuning in. We'll be back next week with another episode of Character Project. I love my sister. <laughs> <laughs>